So over the past month since my last video I started out making art for my game. But after about two weeks in Blender I quickly got the strong urge to do something else that didn't involve 3D modeling for a while. So I chose to start working on my day slash night system. As the title suggests my sky doesn't make use of the sky shader but rather every single piece of my sky is a 3D mesh. Mostly spheres. This allows me to build a really complex sky with a lot of moving and changing parts. Even the solid background color is controlled by a material on a huge inverted sphere. This is so I can easily control the rotation or tilt of the sky, useful for rotating the stars at night and offsetting it based on how far north I want my game to take place. I'm not gonna go over the basics of how a dynamic sky works. Basically if the sun is above the horizon transition a bunch of materials and settings to their daytime values otherwise set them to their night values. I do want to show you guys how I get this effect where the planets appear to be shaded and blend seamlessly into the sky. So objects in the sky have to be shadeless. We don't want them to be affected by the lighting. We also want the dark side to always match the sky color. So to do this I had to fake shading within the shader of the planet. But how do we shade the night side of a planet if it isn't affected by lights? Well, luckily there's a simple way and this can be helpful for more than just planet shaders. Here I have the visual shader for my planets. On the vertex side I have a vector 3 parameter that I update every frame from a script. I calculate the localized direction of the sun relative to the planet then normalize it and pass it to the shader. So back in the shader I also get the normal which is basically the direction that a given point on the sphere is pointing. Then I plug both of those values into the dot product node. If you're unfamiliar with the dot product, like me before this month to be honest, Godot has a pretty lengthy explanation in the docs. But I found it kind of funny that the Unity docs only has these two sentences, and this one is the only sentence I ever needed to read. If the two inputs perfectly match, then it outputs a value of 1. If they are polar opposites, then the output is minus 1. So we plug that result into the color output. Now back on the fragment side of the shader we can get that color, and see what this is doing. I use it as a factor to blend between two colors. The day side color, and the night side color. I use a curve to sharpen the day-night blend a bit, and that's it really. Then in code whenever I change the color of my sky material I also change the night side color of my planets to match it. Notice what happens to the little planet whenever it goes around to the dark side of the gas giant. It just disappeared as if the big planet cast a shadow on it even though they're both shadeless. Well to create that effect I have another input parameter on my planet shader called Eclipse. In code I take the direction of the sun and gas giant relative to the little planet and compare them. If they are an almost match then I know the little planet is probably in the shadow of the big planet so I apply its eclipse factor overriding its entire surface with the night color. Finally, I do the exact same calculation to transition into solar eclipses as you'll see here. Now it's night time in the middle of the day like I would expect you would experience on Europa or Titan. The transition would look much better with a flare effect on the sun but I haven't gotten around to that yet. So this is a fantasy world if you couldn't tell and it will have magic and will be loosely based on mythology which is heavily influenced by astronomy. So the astronomy of this world is very important to its lore and even some gameplay. That's the plan right now anyway. So knowing what and where objects are in the sky will have its uses in this game. 
so I added this little feature that helps with that. For now it's hidden in this little basic menu I created. I also added some basic graphic settings so I can run the game on a potato. But this astronomy perk is what I wanted to show you. This may be a skill players can learn in the game someday. When I actually have a game to play. So now in the sky you can see the names of all the objects. I added the Big Dipper just as a placeholder constellation for now. Eventually I will design my own constellations. I will most definitely change the names of everything eventually as well. I guess the only thing left to show off about my sky would be the meteor showers but you've probably noticed them throughout this video. I increased their frequency as well as the speed of the sky for the sake of this video. Normally they would be more rare and the sky would move more slowly. One glaringly obvious thing this sky is missing is clouds, of course. But I plan to implement a weather system that will manage clouds, wind, temperature, rain, snow, seasonal changes and so on. So it will be a really big and complex system and I'll get around to working on it eventually but right now I'm more interested in finally implementing some gameplay features so in the coming weeks that's probably what I will focus on. As a final note I would like to address how many views and subscribers I have gotten. Over the last month alone this channel has gotten over 7,000 views which is insane to me. Also kind of scary. I know there are some people who probably scoff at those numbers but I've never had an audience greater than 20 people in my life up until now. So thanks a lot for watching, liking, and or subscribing. As always any feedback is appreciated and I'll see you next time, hopefully.